Okay, and finally, the Module 12 Lab Activity. This is going to help you make some connections between what's happening at the surface of the Earth as well as what's happening up in the atmosphere. Because that's, you know, weather happens. Uh, we, we feel the results here at the surface, but of course, the real action is happening up, in, happening up in the atmosphere. So we need all kinds of tools and information constantly to know what's happening in both locations. And you're going to get a little taste of that. Now, the first question asks you to check out the most recent uh, surface map. And here's, here's what you're going to do. You're going to see this. Gonna, there's a link there that's provided. It's going to show a surface map of the United States. Again, click on it, save it, screen capture it, somehow upload it to your instructor. That's the first step. Now, in question two, it says to take a look at your surface map and select two cities. You want to find two cities on your map that uh, one that essentially has relatively calm winds and another area that has very strong winds. And you may notice that there are no city identifiers. We've got all these little station models. If you remember, we, we learned about that in the skills test. But the station models do not have the little three-letter identifier. So you may not know, well, what, what city is that? Well, to find out the city, what you can do is you can click on this website uh, and then choose, you know, if, if it's a somewhere in Kansas, if you know, then you can see the, the names of the, of the cities in Kansas and choose the proper name for the surface map that you're looking at. Okay, so question two is essentially just identifying which two cities you are interested in. So make sure to name the cities, name the states uh, for those locations that you're interested. And the question three says, which one has faster winds based on your surface isobars? Now, again, I should, should explain isobars are these lines, these brown lines on your surface map. These are lines of equal pressure. Any, any spot along this line has the same atmospheric pressure. So that's what isobars are. Explain why, uh, which city has faster winds based on the isobar pattern. Okay, question four asks, okay, which, which uh, you're supposed to estimate the direction of your winds and your wind speeds. Um, I'm sorry, estimate the wind direction in degrees and cardinal direction. So again, this means you have to pay attention to that wind barb and, set, and, and be able to tell which direction is the wind blowing from. Is it from the north? Is it from the south? So give the cardinal direction as well as the degrees. Okay, so if it's blowing from the due north, that would be zero degrees. Blowing from the due east, it's 90 degrees. From the due south, 180. Due west, 270, etc. Okay, question number six has to deal with uh, the sea level pressure of your city that has the faster winds. Okay, so you should get a ballpark feeling uh, based on the isobars that are surrounding your city. And you actually should be able to read the actual pressure reading from the station model. So if you don't remember that, go back to the skills test in, in this module and read about station models specifically for atmospheric pressure. That's essentially the first part of this activity. Second part of this activity is we're going to start dealing with radar imagery and satellite imagery. So the first question says, let's go to the National uh, Weather Service radar network. And it tells us to look for an area that has relatively strong radar echoes. What that means is that we want to look for a place on this map where we see a lot of greens and yellows and reds and all that kind of stuff. So I might click, in this case, I might look at southern Indiana because I can see there's a line of storms. And you want to find uh, echoes that are probably at least in the orange range or at least yellow range. It says 30 decibels or, or greater. So essentially we're looking for yellows and oranges, reds, purples, that kind of stuff. Those are good radar echoes. And so then we're supposed to, again, take a screen grab of that, save that image to our computer, upload it to our instructor. The question, and then we're also supposed to check out, um, so that was the radar image. Now let's check out the satellite image. So again, you're given a link. Here's your satellite page. Now we want to click out, we want to click the same area. So remember, we, we chose southern Indiana for our radar image. We want to choose southern Indiana for our satellite image. Keep in mind, we want to make sure that we're using the infrared color image. So I want to make sure over here I've got infrared color checked on. Then I can click on the same region that my radar image came from. And there we have it. We have the satellite image. And notice the satellite image is all kinds of colors. The, the meaning of those colors is given by this legend down at the bottom. 
This essentially is showing the cloud top temperatures. So the temperatures of the cloud tops in that region. Okay. So you're asked a couple of questions about the cloud top temperatures in question eight. What's the relative altitude of the clouds based on those temperatures? Um, are they high or are they low compared to the other surrounding clouds? And then questions 11 and 12 now make you connect the dots, make you connect the satellite image to the radar image. What do you, you know, what's, what's happening uh, where it's raining really hard? What do you know about the clouds that are in that area? So essentially explain the relationship between your radar echoes and the satellite imagery. Again, trying to make connections. That's the whole, the whole uh, goal of science.